The first time I saw that expression, take time to sharpen the saw, was in a book by Stephen Covey. Great book, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. And he pointed out a story in there, let me paraphrase it, about a guy who was in the woods cutting down a tree. And he's sawing and sawing and sawing. And somebody coming along the path sees him and he says, wow, how long have you been at this? Oh, hours. You look exhausted. Oh yeah, I'm just, I'm so tired. So the person on the path says, well, why don't you take some time to sharpen the saw? Well, don't you see, dum-dum? I'm too busy cutting this tree down. <laughs> and it is important to stop, even though it's in the middle of my pruning season and I need this saw and I should be pruning now. But taking the time to stop to sharpen this saw will make the next few days that much easier, that much more enjoyable, that much more productive. Take time to sharpen the saw. Well, yes, it applies to a saw, physical saw. And that's one of the things I want to do today. Ouch, once it's sharpened, it's sharp. But I also want to look at the importance of sharpening the saw of your life and your life. Because there comes a time when you're sawing or pruning as I'm pruning. I'm cutting and cutting, but this thing is just not cutting right. It is important in that case to stop and take time to sharpen the saw. And for your life, it's the same thing. Have you ever been so much in the middle of doing something that you think, I don't have time for relationships with my family. I don't have time for my physical body to take care of it. I don't have time. I'm too busy doing something else. Well, that's kind of how it works. And he pointed out rightly, there's several areas in our life. There's our physical body. There's our mental and emotional being. There's our spiritual side. And hey guys, let me talk to you because I know what it's like. We can be so focused on our work. We're just going at our work and going at our work. Days, weeks, months go by and you realize, you know what? Um, I've really neglected certain areas of my life. Maybe your relationship with your spouse or your relationship with your kids or your relationship with your creator, whichever aspect, or even your relationship with your dog. <laughs> it is important to take time to stop and sharpen that saw because it's just not what it was. It's just not working right. So that's how it works for our life. We can neglect one area. You probably know what area you may have let get dull if you want to say it that way there's some aspect and you think gee you know if I took a half a day or if I took an hour or if I took a period to get this part of my life back on track life would be so much better just make a point of doing it today you'll be so much happier you took the time well, that's enough on our life. Now let me show you for sharpening an actual physical saw. It's really not that difficult. Let me show you up close. A saw is just a series of teeth. You see all these teeth and each tooth has an angle. So here's an angle, it's kind of dirty, and here's an angle and there's actually three sides. So when I want to just touch up the saw or just give it a little bit of a more bite and here's a nice example see how that tooth right on the tip there is just kind of it's not it's not pointy these points need to be pointy to have a lot of bite to them that one's not as bad it's a little pointy but how do you know if it's pointy enough i like to just try my finger 
If my finger doesn't get kind of caught on it, wow, you can really see the green of my finger, then it's just not sharp enough. So if you can slide your finger along and it doesn't really get, get stuck or impaled, it's really not sharp enough. So to do that, and sharpening is all about following the angles. All I want to do is find the angle that's here. Just touch up that one without touching, without touching this side or that side. So sometimes what I'll usually do is I'll put my finger there to act as a basically a bumper. I'll look at my angle and, and I'll just give it just a one or two goes and then I'll see is that the same angle as I was doing it's actually like this so take time look at the angle let me do a few and then I'll show you the before and after two or three times with the file and already uh, this one has a little more oomph to it but it's still not I, I still don't my finger doesn't impale on it so I'll still keep going the trick is to set yourself up with the same angle so that each time you'll pass your file you'll be in the right angle and you can do it by moving from one tooth to the next so I like to get get my angle check and then then you just move on to the next and the next and so on. The setup is really quite simple. I just take a vise. This is my grafting vise see, with the rubber just so that it's a comfortable working one because you want to when you're set up consistently use the same angle every second tooth here and then you switch to the other side and then you'll do every second tooth from the other side. All you want to do is just get that bite back in. Oh. Oh, that's better. You see how this arm, once I'm set up, all I do is now I shift to the next second tooth. Basically all the teeth on that side. Oh yeah, that's starting. Somebody once <laughs> had an interesting point. He said, you buy a file, you're paying for the whole file. Why are you just using this part? So when you use a file, use the whole thing because otherwise this part will wear out and you'll say, well, I need a new file. But in fact, your ends still have lots of bite to them. So when you use a file, get used to using a full stroke. And every once in a while, tap your file to get those filings out and rotate it so that you're basically using a cleaner part of the file. Hitting a wire, not good for a saw. And you'll definitely have it get dull much quicker. Oh, there's better. So you see, I'm actually rubbing against my two fingers here to act as a guide. And you can feel when you're on the right angle because your file actually glides on a smooth flat surface oh that's nice so now that i've kind of figured out so i got a few teeth to figure out my angle and i'm rested and i just try to be rested the same way for every tooth it takes a while it'll take me about an hour i got this one from lee valley and it cost me 60 dollars for a new blade usually after a whole season certainly it does need a touch-up anyway. So $60, depending on your tax rate, could be $90. Well, that changes it again. You know what's the big value out of it? Is the satisfaction that you get from knowing that you've spent some time, invested some time into something, and now it works much better or it works like new don't rob yourself of satisfaction you think well it's the first time i sharpened the saw it may not work as well or it may cut crooked if you sharpen one side more than the other your saw may actually cut instead of going straight through it may cut and curve 
That means you got more bite on one side, one row of teeth, and therefore they cut faster, and so the saw will, yeah, you don't want that. And if you did, then go over, at least go over the other side and do it again. And then your saw should cut nice and straight, just like in your life. If there's a part that isn't cutting straight, then take that time to sharpen the other side. And you'll be so much happier because it is a satisfaction knowing that your saw cuts better, your life works better, even pruning, it's confusing. I have put together a course that will de-confuse you about pruning. There are things to know, but once you know them, that course, the pruningcourse.com will help you prune with prediction. You will prune knowing what will happen with confidence and approach a tree with confidence. We touch things like the pruner's eye. Yeah, there is a there is a look to looking at a tree. We touch on things like what do you do with branches? You can profit from branches even. We look at how to make the cuts, when to make the cuts, where to make the cuts, where exactly to make the cuts. There's so much more in there. Go start it for free. Go to pruningcourse.com. You can start with the first video that shows you three simple step technique to prune and you'll be so glad. For your tree's sake, before you start pruning, please check out that first video. Sharpening the saw, it's part of pruning. It's important to do. So I'm gonna get this saw finished. I'll show you the results. If your saw has a hook as well, like this one does, and the hook is damaged, just do the same thing. This is just a round file for sharpening uh, chainsaw blades, and that's what I wanna use. You can actually rock your file back and forth on a surface. You'll find, you can actually see when your file is flat. So basically you're following the same angle. And that's really the key to sharpening is just follow the same angle that the manufacturer put on there. There's a reason why it's at that angle. Yeah, the reason it's not going nice and smooth is, yeah, I, I caught things with, ouch. Once it's sharpened, it's sharp. So be careful, don't touch the newly sharpened tips because they, yeah, well, if you want to contribute some blood, and there's a thing whether you push stroke or pull stroke or go this way or do you go that way. So I like to make it as if I was cutting the steel off with the file. This is because it's, it's in bad shape right now, so I'll have to see how it's going smoother already than when it's catching like that, it's because there are burrs and the file is actually cutting those burrs off. You don't want burrs. That's better here. When it goes smooth, you know that your burrs are pretty well off. You do need to come back on the back side of it. It's really quite rough. And these are pieces that will have to come off. So that's why you use the flat side from here and just to nip those pieces off. File flat against the back side because it's a flat side. All I want to do is, is remove the burrs on this side. Guide your file flat. You really don't want to have two edges. At least that's the way this blade is sharpened with one side only, not two sides. So you have to respect whatever was chosen for that blade, for the knife. Grafting knives have just one side, a good grafting knife or actually a budding knife will just have one side sharpened. The other side is absolutely flat to help you graft and get in real close. So the same with this one was sharpened just to one side. So I'm not going to change that. They're already much smoother. Still a few burrs. They'll eventually come off. I'm using my thumb to apply pressure here to keep the file flat on this side. It, when you when you just hear it's just it's just sliding along. Oh, that's nice. Okay, now I can come back on this side using my round file and 
Follow the same angle. Oh, that's much better. Better be careful now, because this thing is a real knife. So when I finish the cut, and I just want to, so usually I use this hook to clean the chimney. Go see that pruning first video, pruningcourse.com, and check out that first video. And it will really show you how the importance of cleaning the chimney. And these hooks I find are really fantastic because I don't even have to cut the little spurs. I just grab them with the hook and they just come right off. Oh yeah, much nicer. Get yourself an assortment of files. These little kits are a nice thing, having a handle. I just like some of my old files. Actually, these were some of these were probably my father's files. They've been around for yeah, a long time and they still have some bite to it. But eventually, yeah, even a file will have to be retired. So now since I've done the one side, I'm, now I'm doing the side to you. I need to change my angle. Try to set yourself up again. So what I do is I put the tip on and I, again, I'm just trying to rock it to see, to see where that flat part is. Now I can feel that, yeah, that's, that's the flat part. Am I actually in the angle? Is the flat right? Oh yeah. And now you want to be careful because now you've taken time to sharpen the saw. This has got finer teeth, this little file. Definitely is already better. And just do one at a time, moving your way down. While you're doing this, you get in a zone and just stop to think of your life. Is there an area that, yeah, really I have been neglecting. I don't like sustainable. Sustainable means you continue, can continue at the level you are for indefinitely. And that seems like a good thing. And if in your life you say, yeah, I want to continue at the level I was indefinitely. If you're going to stop to make a change and focus, why not go the distance and look at the same way for regeneration. Regenerate that part of your life. You know, the Bible talks about a double portion. Hey, imagine if your relationship with your spouse had a double portion, if there was twice the love, twice the caring, you know, twice, not just what it was. Yeah, it's like it was, no. Look to make it that much better. And you can do that with all areas of your life. I mean, spiritual part, certainly something. I woke up this morning with just like the grace of God was there and I got excited about the day like excited I haven't been this excited about a day for a while maybe because it's spring coming on but it was like oh I want to get out there I want to get doing I want to get being and yeah well that's the grace how about having a double portion of being thankful in your life is that something that would be nice Imagine if you got up in the morning and you were just so thankful for everything you've already got, everything you've already done, and then you go forward. Those of you who drive, try and drive with your eyes glued to the mirror and you're gonna get end up in a wreck. And I know people like that who have a focus on the past. And listen, you can't, you can't keep going forward with your eyes peeled on the back, on what was. You got to learn to just let it go. Today, why not make a commitment to look forward? Take, take an hour, take a half a day, take what time is needed and just look ahead with excitement. Let me transfer some of my excitement to you. We can be excited about the future. Oh, I filed my finger down so that it's bleeding. This is where I need a glove. So if you have hands that aren't toughened by the, <laughs> by the farm work too much yet, then wear a glove. It's harder to feel if it's really sharp because wearing a glove. 
can actually hear when you're right in the flat. It sounds different flat against it than when it's catching an edge of the metal. So that's it. I've touched up the hooks at both ends. I've touched up the teeth. They're certainly a, quite a bit better than they were. I should be good to go. It's a bright day. Enjoy the day. Seize the day. Check out that pruningcourse.com as well. Take time to sharpen your saws in both your metal ones and your life. Thanks for watching. Intrigued? Check out the virtual tour of the permaculture orchard. Have trees already? Pruningcourse.com. Subscribe, please. Check out some of the other videos or playlists. There's more to come. Stay tuned. Have a great day. God bless you. Bye. Why don't you? It looks like. Let me start that one over again.